You're rooting through the trash? Oh my god. What? This CD case is totally nice. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm a psychic. Don't eat the chicken. Let's call the cops. No, no, no. At headquarters, I suddenly and miraculously have a vision. Vision? What am I seeing? 831. On Highway 138. Exactly. In the spirit world, things get jumbled and out of sequence. You named your fake detective agency Psych? Why don't you just call it, hey, we're fooling you and the police department, hope we don't make a mistake and someone dies because of it. Perhaps that name is entirely too long, it would never fit on the window. Dude, I can't believe we did this! This is unbelievable! What? A. D. N. It's headphones sale! What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a supercharged review in that um, with the um, close, ever closening um, date of Psych 3, this is Gus coming out on November 18th, I thought I would do a rewatch of the original Psych TV show, Psych Seasons 1 through 8, and I actually got through those pretty quickly or faster than I expected, so I thought I would give the Peacock app a, a shot and rewatch Psych the movie and Psych 2 um, Lassie Come Home. So um, I figured I would do a full review of all of the Psych just to get an overview and part part of it was just so I wanted to get a recap of the show what went on it being one of my favorite comedy shows on TV particularly liking the acting of um, Sean Spencer and Burton Guster on the show a good strong supporting cast and all of that so I will start it off to say that for the most part the show holds up except for a couple of things but one thing I actually found they did particularly well so when the show starts we see um, a lot of the people using Motorola Razor flip phones the original one back in the day not the later one that was re-released on the Android platform so originally that would have been something that would have felt a lot or would have felt dated but they actually did stay with the times in general as far as um, upgrading Sean's phone to an iPhone I believe Gus also got one maybe at some point but we don't really see him. I think there was maybe one or two episodes where they talk about him tweeting a lot so they did mention Twitter so things like that the show generally stayed with the times as far as stuff like that went but now that the show's been off the air for quite some time it does kind of fall apart as far as some of those technological changes there um and the other thing i did like is that while the um, cars are of the time they do mention in one of the episodes when um Lassiter is being considered for to become chief of police later in the show they one of the other candidates does mention that he would let the mayor um borrow his tesla so that's right around the time of tesla's rise and um, rise to popularity so overall the show did, paid a lot of attention to little details like that so i that's one of those things that holds up in the show um one of the things I didn't remember and I actually found particularly interesting was the how much they had the intros in the show being young Sean and Gus. Um, that actually went on well into season five. But in season five, they started um, doing less and less of that just because after they introduce um, Yin and Yang into the show as being uh, major villains of the show, it kind and less to a lesser extent um despero but more on the yin and yang side the show took a little bit of a more serious turn as far as um not really having as much as those intros and it probably started becoming one of those things where they were having fewer and fewer instances of um being able to um have more of those young sean teaching moments from uh Sean and his father but overall it was one of those things that I actually did like and is more noticeable that they um, faded out slowly. I, my memory of it was it was um, sporadic and kind of all over the place where it wasn't necessarily every single episode but it was you know maybe every couple of episodes or random things like that so seeing them on a more regular basis and then slowly fading away was of particular note. Um, 
otherwise, uh, one of the things I did like, and it was noticeable this time around as well, was that each season had a Halloween and Christmas episode in it. So I thought that was particularly interesting. I like that just to, to have that nod. And then having, for example, the Halloween episodes tie into um, specific um, popular films or themes like the sorority house in the first episode, or I think potentially an episode that I think it was a psycho related episode and things like that, which brings me to the point of just how many pop culture references they had throughout the show. Um, so many to the point where even in just season one, I was going to take a note of all of them, but then it was, you know, a whole bunch of them just so, so when you're watching the show, you realize just how in tune the writers through Gus and Sean are as far as all of that goes. Um, and then of course the one thing that I found, one of the things among other things that I found particularly funny was the short-lived Raspberry. So um, Gus's company car, the Blueberry, goes through a lot or gets a lot of uh, work put on, in on it during, throughout the course of the show. It gets uh, modded and paint job, it gets cut in half and all of that. So at one point he does get a loner car, which is red. So he calls it the Raspberry, which actually just only lasts through one episode and barely even through one scene. So I actually enjoyed that bit of connection very much so. And the one thing that I did remember noting at the time, but particularly stands out this time, is throughout the, se the series, um, the number of times they mention Lieutenant Dobson, but never actually show him. And I actually forgot that he had been played in the very last episode at the end of or in the season finale, or the series finale, he was played by Val Kil Kilmer. So I actually thought that was particularly noteworthy. And I like that in the psych after show, they mentioned that they wanted to make sure they got him. Um, and then they did mention that they tried to also get Emilio Estevez, but they were unable to do that. So I'm kind of ho holding out hope that they, they're able to get him in potentially Psych 3. This is Gus, but that's neither here nor there. I did, but I did like that they were able to get Val Kilmer in and have that little bit of cameo for him to say that he's not sure why, um, they, Sean had sent him, a. Uh, DVD um, to say goodbye when he, uh, Sean and him had barely spoke and that is a very meta thing to do for the show just because they talk about Lieutenant Dobson a lot but never actually show him on screen so a nice bit of connection there. Um, so to round out this particular review, um, I, some of my favorite episodes in the show include uh, season four or basically season four episode six of Viagra Falls where they have uh, William Devane who played the president in Stargate SG-1 when um, it's later on when uh, Kinsey is the vice president and then Carl Weathers play, um, who played Apollo Creed are basically the top cops when um, Sean's dad is in the department and is basically a good episode to portray how Sean and Gus would be once they get older and kind of how they're not any different from the older versions of themselves. So while the old guys do the fist bump, uh, Sean and Gus, or sorry, the old guys do a handshake, but Sean and Gus do the fist bump. They all turn their heads away to make it seem like uh, to do their little inter or, or to, to do their discussions amongst each other, but people can still hear them. So it's kind of like that revealing moment that um, Sean and Gus are basically the new versions of the same thing that happened before. Um, and then as far as um, attention to pop culture, that I like the episode called Dual Spires, which is basically a Twin Peaks episode. Um, they have a lot of connections to Twin Peaks with uh, various actors showing up, having the diner and the lodge. You have a lady wrapped in plastic. You have the co um, coffee and pie and all of that. So they generally just made it a very down to, to the very last detail episode to pay homage to Twin Peaks. Um, last Night Gus is also a very um, good episode just because in general... Um, they don't rem or none of the characters met remember what happened um, the, in the prior evening, but it's essentially a um, hangover movie style episode where they're trying to figure out what happened and 
um, solve a case in the meantime, and then they have a call to World of Warcraft, um, or a World of Warcraft meme in the form of Leroy Jenkins, with I think Sean yelling out Leroy Jenkins, so um, I thought that was a particularly uh, funny nod there. And then finally, um, Here's Lassie was a particularly good episode, just on a personal note. So if that doesn't quite ring a bell as far as what that would be a connection to, it's a episode in general based on The Shining. So for me, that stood out as a very good episode as well. Um, so all in all the episodes, um, all the um, seasons and episodes work very well. They progress very nicely. In general, over the course of the seasons and the episodes, you see how um, Gus is basically the mature one of the group. Uh, Sean is a flamboyant, immature one, but they work together very well to all play off each other, especially with um, Sean having his powers of observation and then Gus being the mature one, but then also having the super smeller. Um, and then the progression of, you know, the come on son, I've heard it both ways and all of that, the progressing relationship with Sean and Juliet, and ultimately the fore foretelling when um, we have the um, millionaire guy who's dating Juliet telling her that he's a fraud and that kind of foretelling um, Juliet uh, finding out that Sean is a fraud and hurting her just because he did not come clean with her about it. So. All in all, a very good show that generally still holds up. I still enjoyed all of them. They all still made me laugh. I got through it a lot faster than I expected just because I did enjoy all of those episodes. Um, granted, there are probably episodes that are better or worse than others, but in general, all of them just work. Um, I actually was really happy when we I got to re-watch the introduction of Woody's character. Um, I liked... Um, the relationship with Sean and his dad. Um, I actually kind of wanted um, Gus's parents to be more in the show than they were. Um, and then same thing with Sean's mom or having more conversation there. It kind of felt like it fell apart when Sean's mom came back and then disappeared again and all of that. So it's kind of weird, but um, I can kind of see they kind of played it that she was only going to be there temporarily. So it kind of worked that she wasn't there, but I was kind of hoping that she would be around more or maybe move back to Santa Barbara, even though if she lived on her own. So we could have more of that relationship between Sean and his mom, um, maybe have a or origin story of why she calls him Goose and all of that. So um, those things aside, so for me, I would definitely give the TV series a grade of an A. As far as the movie goes, um, Psych 1 or Psych the movie basically picks up after the end of the season eight finale as far as everyone being in san francisco picking up the piece or uh, basically sean and gus trying to pick up their lives there with trying to make um psych francisco on uh, sean's side and then gus trying to finding a job immediately just because business is slow and all of that so um that and then with um uh, Karen Vic becoming the chief of police and then um, Juliet becoming the uh, lead detective so all in all that was kind of just a not really tying up loose ends but picking up the pieces there to kind of do a follow-up as far as what everybody's been up to since um, Psych went off the air and then Psych 2 was a particular note just because um, of Lassiter's um, I mean, I'm drawing a blank on uh, Tim's last name. I always say it wrong, but um, something ombudsman or something along those lines, um, ombudsman. But I think he had some health issue, whether it was a stroke or heart problem. Some basically they played it into the movie as far as what was going on, which is why he wasn't as much in the first side movies as um, the rest of the characters. But basically, having that sent around Lassie and um, him walking was a big step. It was very heartwarming to see that and to be able to go home with. Um, Marlo was definitely a good sign. And basically, it was just to have sh everyone go back to Santa Barbara, pick up the pieces, solve a case, and prove that Lasseter is not losing his mind and to have him back on his feet. So, 
all in all a good sign and of course I liked and I guess my favorite part of that whole story aside from the whole thing with Lassiter was the whole misunderstanding with Juliet being pregnant or not being pregnant versus um, Gus's girlfriend actually being pregnant but also being um, married so kind of the faltering life of or the faltering of Gus's um, love life and finding someone to actually settle down with so I'm actually now I feel like I'm actually well prepared to go into um, psych 3 as far as um, Guster getting married having baby Guster and um, dealing with Celine's estranged husband and all of that so it looks like there is going to be a direct follow-up to psych 2 so I definitely can't wait to see what psych 3 brings us and if they're going to continue to do the, the psych movies just to have that or if psych 3 is going to be the final movie in the series. So all in all the movies don't make much sense unless you've seen the um, rest of the um, show. Um, but overall they stand up very well on their own um, so it's kind of a good recap of um, the show if you want to see, kind of get an idea for what the Psych TV series is. So if you watch the films, um, I would recommend it assuming you wa you watch them and then you want to go back and figure out um, what's going on, what all these characters are, what all these relationships are all about and kind of have an origin story from the show to explain what happens in the movies I guess. But overall the movies are definitely still good times and kind of encapsulate like a two-story arc from the show so kind of like Santa Barbara Town 1 and 2 but um, built into one long hour and a half movie for the show. So that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, did you like the show, dislike the show, what are your favorite episodes and that sort of stuff? You can find me on Twitter at Vitalian01. The website is Headphones Neil Dahl Reviews for past episodes, subscription links, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.